James Fulgenzi serves as a Director of Government Affairs and Advocacy at Proof, formerly notarized. In that role, James works with industry and government partners across all 50 states, advocating for innovations in the law to advance digital commerce, including the use and acceptance of remotely notarized documents and electronic signatures. Before joining Proof, James spent several years working at the intersection of technology and public policy. James is based in Washington, D.C., and is often found traveling to state capitals across the country. Dale Hardy, Senior Counsel, Government and Regulatory Affairs for Proof, formerly notarized. In that role, Dale's primary responsibilities include tracking, analyzing, and engaging in legislation and regulations released to Proof's business, including topics such as remote online notarization and electronic signatures. Prior to his tenure with Proof, Dale worked as a nonpartisan staff member of the Judici Judiciary Committee in Kentucky's General Assembly. There, he drafted bills on a variety of topics, including criminal law, domestic relations, animal welfare, and notarization. Eddie Otto, Vice President, Sales and Strategy, with over 25 years of experience in strategy, business development, and digital transformation. In his role as VP Sales and Strategy, he leads the enterprise sales and business development team responsible for accelerating the adoption of Proof's category leading online notarization platform in the real estate industry. Working closely with enterprise customers, partners, and stakeholders, he also oversees Proof's mortgage and land title industry affairs efforts, advocating for and leading changes that promote digital transformation. So I believe I've done my introductions and I wanna just thank you folks for joining us today and everybody for attending and we'll just get started. Thank you so much, uh, Christina, we, Elizabeth, we appreciate it, uh, excuse me. And then just really quickly, we've got Andrew McDougal on the line who's our um, product marketing manager of Real Wiz. We've got some of the smartest people on remote online notarization on this call. Uh, Dale Hardy's pulling up the slide deck now um, and we will jump in, but really looking forward to engaging in this conversation. Really encourage you all to ask questions throughout the presentation, uh, drop them into the Q&A. If we don't have time to get to them, we really believe that the dialogue around these you know, questions that you have are going to be really important. So we want to make sure we can get to them. So New York MBA will capture those or we'll capture those in real time, try to follow up afterward. But with that, I'll hand it off to Dale. All right, now that I have this in the right spot, um, believe it or not, New York already has several years worth of experience with remote notarization um, and a few different forms of remote notarization. Going back to 2020, like a lot of states, they adopted a temporary order that allowed for some form of remote notarization that looks a lot different than what you can do now. That basically was a, a paper-based process in a remote setting that involved passing paper back and forth with the notary through mail or FedEx or something along those lines and simply showing your ID on camera to the notary. Um, Governor Hochul did sign a permanent bill that allowed for another temporary solution while the effective date of the bill was coming down that allowed for the use of electronic signatures and some forms of identity proofing, which is a process we'll talk about more later, but did up-level what was going on from the emergency or the executive order. Fast forward to January of last year, Department of State adopted regulations to implement that bill that changed things yet again, which requires things like the journal for notaries in New York has specific um, processes for identity proofing that are required in New York and uh, the use of things like the electronic signature and seal. So. New York, uh, remote notarization has already had several forms of evolution through New York, which understandable why there might be some confusion as to what's allowed and who can do what. We're going to talk through all of that today. Thank you, Dale. And before we hand it over for a quick demo of a remote online notarization platform, we'll be showing you what the proof notarization platform looks like today. Um, to give you a sense, and we wanted to do that at the front end of the platform, uh, the the webinar here so that you can really see what we're talking about as we get into talking about rules and regulations, benefits of the process, and what this really means for the state of New York. But what is a RON and how does it work? Um, you know, quite simply, when remote online notarization was created in the law, it was designed to help bring the traditional paper-based process into the digital world. 
digital brings a lot of benefits, but there were certain things that needed to be addressed. So there were enhancements created to the process when it comes to identity verification and the tools that were given to a notary to make that experience a little better. So to start off, one of the easiest things for you as a lender or somebody in the real estate space is just getting your documents to your customer. So gone are the days of having to FedEx documents back and forth. You know, certain platforms like ours will include a document origination process where you'll create the you know, a process for you to put a document together on a backend system and email it to a customer. So they're starting the transaction in email. You know, a lot of platforms have a retail facing platform. You're going to their website, you're uploading a document, you're initiating a transaction. Key to a remote online notarization is that identity verification piece. This is really where the fraud prevention of a notarization is up-leveled. The safety and security and confidence that the notary has is up-leveled. And the reason is you have to go through a multi-step identity verification process before you meet with the notary. So the sessions, the, the steps here are outlined in the order that they occur. So you go through a process that really helps to identify you know, something you know, something you have, and something that you are. So the typical processes and tools that are used today to do that are KBA identity proofing, which we'll go through, credential analysis, or and or biometrics, which is comparing a photo that you take of yourself to your ID. So we'll go through what that looks like when we go through a platform demo. If you successfully pass through that, and I think that's key, you then meet with the notary. The great thing there is the notary is able to see the results of that, whether or not you passed a copy of your ID, looking at you, and make a determination if you are who you say that you are based on the information that's provided and the person that they're meeting with face-to-face. -face. If they feel confident, they move forward with that. You securely sign and notarize your documents completely online. When that session is completed, you are sent the documents. Those are sealed, tamper-sealed documents. You have a detailed audit trail that's included in that. The notary is getting their information logged in their electronic journal, and you're you're given as the customer. And the notary also has a copy of the the video recording. And when I say customer, there I mean the the lender that is working with the notary, not necessarily the individual signer, but they could have it if they wanted it. So we'll go through what that looks like in steps in a second, but just wanted to give you a high level overview of what the law really created when it talks about remote online notarization. All right, excellent. Well, um, what we're gonna do at this point is Andrew and I are gonna hop into a demo to, to, to get out of the sausage making of, of what James sort of explained there uh, verbally and actually see it in process. So we're gonna be using our, our proof wrong platform to do that. And Andrew is gonna be stepping in to play two roles. He is a versatile actor. So he's gonna be playing two roles one as the uh, a lender opening and creating a transaction for online notarization. This will be a, a loan modification transaction he'll be creating. He's also going to be playing the part of the borrower, and I will be playing the part of the notary or the attorney, whichever it may be the case in this particular demo. Andrew, you want to get us going? Yeah, thanks, Eddie. So... Mm -hmm. Hi there, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Andrew McDougall, Product Marketing Manager here at Proof, and I'm really excited to show you uh, not just the Proof platform, but the, the process of an online notarization and what it looks like to take these physical paper transactions and, and move them online. So as Eddie outlined, uh, we're going to go through the process of uploading a document package today. Um, it is not going to be a full document package by any means. Uh, we want to be mindful of the time and respectful of your time. Uh, so we'll upload a couple of documents, uh, prep them for the signer to complete, and then uh, I will log out of the lender experience, move into the signer experience, and we'll go through what a signer would go through to complete an online closing. And then Eddie will jump in as the notary, will actually flip perspectives uh, so that you can see what it's like to be the notary or attorney on a given transaction. And then he'll walk us through kind of all of the things that uh, a good online notarization vendor will collect on the back end on your behalf. And that's all the tamper evident documentation, the audit trail, uh, video recording, things like that. So as you can see here, we're just in kind of the back end of the proof platform. I'm sure a lot of platforms look pretty similar as far as uh, collection of all the transactions uh, in your account. We're going to start by sending a new transaction for a real estate closing. And so uh, the proof platform specifically is set up to support home purchase, refi, loan mods, things like that. If this were a title account, it would have things like cash and seller side transactions. Uh, again, for the sake of the demo, we're going to make this pretty quick and pretty easy. 
Uh, I'm going to select loan modification. And in a minute, I'll upload documents that are specific to a refi, but you know, could be whatever you need to complete that specific transaction. Uh, one thing unique to proof that I will call out is we have this eligibility engine. So we take um, uh, all of the counties that allow for e-recording um, and the rules and regulations of each state and account for that when determining whether or not you can even move forward with an online closing on our platform. And so we are in our demo environment. Uh, I can put in really any address and get any outcome that I want. And so for this example, I'm going to put in a, a New York address um, that some of you may know. I'm just going to do 30 Rockefeller. I'm sure we're getting it at a steep discount today, of course. And the recording county is going to be New York. Perfect. And so you see up here, I got an alert through the proof platform that this uh, property is eligible to close. Again, that is based on our knowledge of the e-recording county that they'll accept documents uh, to be uh, electronically shared with them and the ability for the platform to support online notarization um, either in that state or uh, for the, the property. Um, one thing to note, we do also account for things like, like papering out. So some states have laws where even in counties where they don't have e-recording, folks can print out the documents and submit those. The, the platform accounts for whether or not that's an available option as well. So we're gonna move forward with an e-closing today. And now I'm just gonna fill out all of the basic information that uh, a lender or a title agent might, or an attorney might put in for these transactions. So I'm just gonna give it a loan number. If I wanted to add closing team members, I could do that here. So loan officers, uh, title agents, any other additional participant uh, who may want to participate in the closing could be added here as well. For the sake of the demo, I'm just gonna use my information. Great. And then I'm going to pick a date window. So it doesn't really matter to me when the signer completes this closing. Uh, I just want them to do it today. We could schedule a closing for a specific time if you wanted to decide that at one o'clock, we're all gonna get together and complete this closing. It's totally up to you as the, um, the person facilitating the transaction. Um, in the case of proof, we work with the notarized network, which is the largest on-demand notarized network, uh, notary network available. Um, I'm gonna instead today select an internal notary for this transaction. I'm actually gonna pick Eddie to be my notary. So Eddie will be the one to receive the call in a little bit and we'll show you what that experience is like. And now I'm going to upload the documents. So every transaction for our platform, at least, um, includes an e-sign consent form that just recognizes that the electronic signature is going to have the same legal binding weight as your physical signature will. Uh, all real estate transactions have an e-sign consent form that uh, must be completed. In the meantime, I'm going to add documents. And so today I'm just going to add a closing disclosure, a deed of trust, and a promissory note. And in a moment, those will load and we'll get them tagged up real quick. Right. And so here we have the closing disclosure. I'm going to apply just a signer signature at the bottom. Again, we won't fill out the full thing just for the sake of time. Um, I'm actually going to turn off this designation that mentions the requiring of a notarization. This closing disclosure doesn't require a notarization, but I will keep it so that they can only complete it in the meeting with the notary. I'll move on to the next document, which is the deed of trust. Again, not going to tag up the whole thing, but let's say that I want the signer to fill out something here, and then I need the notary to fill in all of their information. So their seal can go here. We'll put the state designation, one for the county. Let's see. Yeah. So. Okay. And then we'll move to the final document, which is the note. For this one, let's just do signer designation. And then we'll put a seal for the notary and a signature designation for the notary. Again, not by the book, just showing you the functionality of the platform. 
So now that we've tagged up the entire document, we will save and close. We can also reorder these documents. So let's say that I actually want, you know, the, the number four document to go there. We can do that. Uh, we can order it however is necessary to uh, promote an efficient closing. Custom email, if you want to help connect your uh, the experiences between your um, how you've been working with your clients to this point to moving them onto the proof platform. You can put in a custom message there. A lot of folks like doing that just to, again, connect customer experiences. And then if there's anything specific that the notary needs to know about this transaction, you can put in a note for the notary as well. Uh, a lot of folks actually use it as a way to invite the notary into the closing if they're using our on-demand network. So they'll say, you know, congratulate Patrick on the purchase of his first home, something like that. And it just goes the extra mile in the customer experience. So with that, I'm gonna send the transaction. You can see here, we have a status for that it is sent to signer. And as the signer goes through the uh, e-closing process, that will update to reflect where they are along the way. And I'm gonna bring my inbox over here. And this is that, uh, that transaction that we just created. I've received the invitation as the signer. So that's an important thing to call out. And I actually need to sign out of this portal. Uh, so I am moving from the lender view to the signer view. And from this point on, this is what the signer is going to experience uh, during their e-closing process. So I'm going to click sign documents now. I'm going to be prompted to create an account with proof. Uh, this account for us is free. Uh, it's just a way for folks to get back in and access their documents at a later date. Get this notarized. And so now I can see the full closing package ahead of time, which is really great when you think about the questions that come up at the closing table, uh, at least when it comes to the proof platform, we're giving folks an opportunity to review those documents ahead of time so that those questions can be addressed before you get to the closing table. Uh, this is that e-sign document that I called out earlier. As you can see, I have a designation here for my name and the date, and because they're blue, I can actually click them and complete them. Uh, when I apply my signature, I'm acknowledging that it has the same legal weight as my physical signature does. So I'll check that box and use my signature and apply the date as well before moving on to the next document. So this is that closing disclosure we just tagged. And on this one, if you go to the bottom, you can see that the signature designation is actually grayed out. And that's because when preparing the document, I decided that I did not want the signer to have that ability to sign before meeting with the notary. So this will be available for me to sign in the meeting with Eddie down the line. But again, I can review this document. If I have questions about what my interest rate is or the actual final total amount, those are questions that I can surface to my attorney, my uh, loan officer, whoever it might be ahead of time. So we'll go through, we already looked at the deed of trust. We already looked at the note. We'll just move forward with the rest of the signing. And so, as you can see, I'm now on screen twice. Uh, what we do here is uh, test the uh, microphone, uh, video, and audio levels of the plat of your um, device to make sure that you are going to have a smooth uh, experience with the notary. Uh, we also check the internet connection. So as you can see, I got a weak signal connection. It's okay because we're in our demo environment, um, but it usually just means folks need to move closer to the Wi-Fi router or somewhere with stronger um, cell servers that they're completing a closing on, uh, on a mobile device. So I'm going to ignore that for now and move forward with closing. So that, the first step in our, our multi-step verification process is going to be uh, the knowledge base authentication. So I'm going to provide, in addition to my name, my date of birth, the last four digits of my social and a recent uh, U.S. address in order to populate knowledge challenge questions based on my history. I'm not going to put in my real information for the demo. Um, so I can, because we're in our demo environment, I can put in really anything I need to, to move forward. This is not the case in our live environment. So if you had a closing going through today in our actual live environment, your signer would have to put in their authentic information.
And now that the system has that information, it's populated. So now knowledge challenge questions for me. I, as the signer, have two minutes and two attempts to get four out of five questions correctly in this quiz. I can start whenever I'm ready. And again, we're in our demo environment. They're marked correct for me because it's embarrassing when we can't remember how to complete the KBA process and demos. But again, in the actual closing experience, these are not marked for, uh, for the signer. Great, so I passed. And then we'll move on to the second part of this, which is the uh, credential analysis. This is the something you have component of um, the identity verification process. Most folks go through the mobile capture experience. We update our phones every chance we get, right? The cameras are, are higher quality. For the sake of the demo, I'm going to use the, the laptop uh, camera instead. So I'm gonna use a US ID and a driver's license to complete this process. I'll begin by capturing the front of my ID. Again, uh, because this is a demo, I'm gonna use my Charlie card, which is how I get around the city of Boston. Um, in our live environment, you would not be able to use a Charlie card to get through the uh, credential analysis process. The system would flag that as uh, a potentially fraudulent ID. Take the photo here. And what's happening on the back end is the system's looking for uh, irregularities in the ID, uh, spacing issues, sizing issues, uh, matching the barcode to the, the data that we have on file to authenticate whether or not the ID is genuine. And because we were in our demo environment, it will uh, verify my credential. Again, it would not do this in a real environment with uh, an ID such as this. So with that, we've done this something you know, we've done this something you have, We'll move on to the notary session, which again, affirms the something that you are. Uh, the thing that I always like to call out in these demos, because there's always this perception of uh, what an online notarization really is. Like if we have all these security elements up front, why is the notary involved? Why is the attorney involved? Didn't we just execute a bunch of security measures? We did, but the notary, the attorney serves a really important function as that last line of defense in the identity verification process. We're just giving you all the tools you need to have greater confidence in the, in the people that you're working with, the integrity of the transaction that you're completing. So with that, I'm going to move forward to the waiting room. And at this point, we're going to flip over to Eddie's perspective. We'll show you picking up a call on the platform. We'll show you what he does to verify um, my identity as the signer on the platform, and then we'll go through the actual closing process. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Eddie. All right, Andrew, thank you. I am going to hop into my screen here and share. One other thing I'll call out really quick, when we do connect in a moment, you'll see that Eddie and I are going to mute ourselves in the notary room. That is just to prevent feedback in the Zoom platform. Um, that would not be encouraged for an actual closing to not be able to have the ability to talk to one another, but wanted to call that out. Yeah, we definitely want that. And I see there's a couple of questions coming in through the Q&A. Please keep them coming. We we're, we saved a bunch of time at the end to go over those. So feel free to type in your questions in Q&A and we'll get to them at the end. All right, Andrew, can you see my screen just as a quick check? I can. Okay, great. So I am now logged in as the notary for this uh, same lender company. And uh, I can see here I have uh, some unscheduled meetings. That's anything that might show up uh, real time. And I could sit here and wait and I'll hear a ring in my ear if, if somebody joins. Or I also have some scheduled uh, meetings down here that might show up. But I see that I do have uh, Andrew McDougall has just gone through his uh, verification process. So I know as a notary and knowing this platform that he's already gone through the uh, the KBA and the identity proofing and the, the credential analysis. And so I am going to hop in here and join this meeting now. And I've got two screens I'm going between. So I'm looking over here. I'm really not going to you guys. <laughs> so um, First thing that I can see, oops, is I've got the wrong camera set up. What do we have here? Yep, Eddie, you can go into AV settings. Oh, okay. Is that here? 
Okay, we'll go with the proper camera. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to mute myself, as Andrew mentioned. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is welcome Andrew to his closing. Um, but uh, I'm going to go in here, and I can see that I've got this validate ID icon next to his uh, picture there. So I'm going to click on that, and what it's going to do, it's going to show me those still captures or actually uh, live captures of the credential. I can look at it, the front and the back. I can zoom in and out. Um, I have all sorts of uh, different different capture methods here. But I also noticed that I can't complete the ID validation. And that is because this is a New York property. And I happen to know in New York that there's another uh, verification method that's required. And so I'm going to go over here and click on where I've got this little dot. It says selfie. And so this is where I'll instruct Andrew. Hey, Andrew, we've got to go through one more validation uh, step. And I'm going to start a selfie capture process with you. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Capture. Great. And we're actually going to switch back to my screen, and we'll show you all what the uh, the signer goes through as part of that process as well. All right. So I think I have to stop sharing. Just a moment. Yep. OK, so now we'll go see what Andrew sees once I click that button. Great. All right, Eddie, is my screen up? It is. OK, perfect. So as a quick orientation, you saw that Eddie and I are both interacting in real time on screen. Uh, we're both looking at a common document at the same time. As you'll see in a minute, as we go through the signing process, I'll apply my signature, he'll apply his seal. We'll see those async. Um, so there's no lag in between uh, the application of uh, different designations. Uh, as Eddie mentioned, uh, the, the step that we need to complete is that, uh, that biometric selfie component. And so um, it is saying here that it needs a little bit more information to verify my identity. So I'm gonna begin that process. Select that my government issued ID is from the US. We're gonna do the driver's license again and capture the front and back of the ID for additional analysis. Perfect, I'll use that photo. And then we'll use So again, because this is the demo environment, it's going to process the ID, it'll come back um, positive, and then it's going to make sure that I'm actually me. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to capture uh, what we call a, a biometric selfie. And what it is, it's a lot like when you set up your, uh, your iPhone or Android device for facial recognition, where you turn side to side, up and down, and it's capturing um, the footage of your face. And what that does is we're then able to map that to the ID and validate that the photo on the ID and the person on screen is who they claim to be. And not only that, there's also a liveliness check too. So when you think about uh, deep fakes or artificial intelligence, we are actually uh, confirming that the person is actually there, is a live individual. So we'll get started with that. So now I'm gonna look at the screen and, and do some funny stuff, but it, you should be able to see in a moment <laughs> that I will be asked to look left, I'll be asked to look right. We'll verify my identity. And that's it. So the verification process on my end is done. I'll stop sharing. We'll go back to Eddie's side and we'll show you what he sees after I've completed that process. Okay, great. So um, I assume you can see my screen. We always get a good capture of Andrew. So he never knows when we're going to snap that picture. But um, as you saw before in the primary, uh, I can see the primary ID go back and um, the front and the back. And while I was waiting, uh, as soon as Andrew finished, I saw this selfie come up. And down below uh, in our platform, it tells me that the selfie comparison has passed. So now I do have availability to this button that I can complete the ID validation. And as uh, Andrew had mentioned, that was something uh, he has, a, an ID that we verified is a bona fide ID something he knows, which is the knowledge-based questions, and something he is, which is his facial recognition. So we are now ready to proceed. And so I'm gonna exit identity verification, and I can see that I've got a little green check mark up here that I've completed that step, and now we can proceed into the signing itself. So 
Uh, I've got the documents on screen. I can scroll through independently of Andrew so he can uh, read through the documents, review, or he can jump to the end. Our, our particular tool has this uh, pointer feature. I can click down here right next to his signature and it will, on his side, it will scroll him down to the signature. So it's not just me saying, okay, scroll, scroll, page, whatever. I can take him right there. And I'm gonna ask Andrew to go ahead and sign his name on this closing disclosure. And I can see in real time that he has signed it. Um, <clears throat> if something went wrong here, I could delete it. Um, if it's too small, I could resize it and I could reposition this here. So um, make sure that looks good. And now that this document is complete, I am going to move forward and lock this document and we'll go on to the next one. So I know I've got four documents here to sign. <clears throat> And so we understand our example is a loan mod. We've got different types of documents in here. So pay no attention to the details of these documents, more, more just the functionality of what you'd experience um, in a RON platform. So I'm gonna scroll down to where he needs to sign again, and we can do the same function. I could say, hey, Andrew, go ahead and scroll on down and sign your name. I can move that around as well if I need to. And now it's my turn. I'll see my, my uh, annotation designations are a little bit different color. And I can move these around as well if I need to. And I'll go ahead and uh, enter my credentials as well as my seal. And this is gonna, I'm gonna say is an acknowledgement. And so I get my stamp on there. So now we've completed this document and I will move forward to our last one. Oh, and it looks like I am missing a requirement. Um, I'm gonna go back to the meeting and it's saying I'm missing a disclosure. And that's because in New York, uh, we are required to add a disclosure onto the uh, end of the documents. And this is a statement that says the following. So the, the platform reminded me to do that so I don't break the law and I'll now go forward and lock this document. And we go to our uh, last document here, which is a note and uh, we know notes aren't normally notarized, but we wanted to practice. So I'm going to add an acknowledgement here and my signature. I can see this is a little messy, so I'm going to move these around as I can. And that document is now complete as well. So I will lock this one. Oh, it looks like I missed that disclosure again. And we'll drop that right here. And now I'll lock it. First time I meant to miss it so I could show you. The second time was just a flat out mistake. All right, so our signing is complete. And so I can thank Andrew for his time and for going through these documents with him. I'll advise him once we complete our meeting, he will have the ability to download the documents on his own and uh, also share them with others via link, not, not documents emailed to one another, but actually via link to uh, other parties that he trusts and with that andrew we're ready to complete are we not yeah we are so uh okay. on our end specifically with the the proof platform uh we'll ask signers about their experience and that goes a long way um in working with our on-demand network to make sure that um signers are are dealing with uh, notaries who are uh professional uh and you have insight into that that feedback as well and for notaries who are completing transactions um, using a, maybe a notary within your your firm, uh, you have transparency into their CSAT scores. Well, so again, it just goes a long way to connecting the dots with your customer experience. Okay. Um, so I, th I believe at this point we're going to jump in and see like what now what happens right what's what what is what's left after the the signing what does that exhaust look like So I just filtered in my dashboard in my notary dashboard here. Um, all transactions that closed today, and obviously the one that we just completed shows up. So I see this completed transaction, and when I click on that, I get a host of information that's laid out in more or less in tabs along the top. So I've got, uh, and again, this is something we're showing you that uh, many and most of the platforms will offer, but uh, something you certainly would ask for when you're shopping is, well, what, you know, what is all the information after the signing that I have access to as a lender, as an attorney, as a notary? So I can um, move across these tabs and I'll see the, uh, the different, oops, I didn't have any contacts on this particular signing. It was just me and Andrew, but I can go to the signers 
and I can see again a review of the uh, information and the IDs that were used. I am the notary, that's my information. It takes about 15 minutes for the videos to render, but what we'd see here is the what we call the talking heads of the video. So uh, the recording is going to be just the uh, just the video feed of Andrew and myself, of the signer and the notary and other signers if they were if there were multiple signers on the platform. We do not record the document signing itself. Uh, that would expose too much in PI and in many states that's not legal. Um, I'm going to move on to the documents. And so we see those four documents that uh, that we just signed. Down here, I can get a single PDF of all of the um, uh, of all the documents if I'd like, or I can grab them and download them individually if necessary. Uh, this is a history of the uh, actions that that took place during the signing. Um, notes if there are any on the file. And then importantly, we've got an activity log here that shows uh, all of the uh, important steps that took place along the way, along with date and timestamps and who did what. Um, so this is your audit trail um, of the transaction. And I'm gonna jump back over here. Now, um, as a notary in New York, I believe it's up here under my journal. Uh, one of the other requirements is that the journal of activity or electronic journal be stored for, Dale, help me out, 10 years? I think it's a period of 10 years. That's right. Okay. Um, and so I've seen here a few other demo files that I've closed on, and each one of these lines represents the, uh, the oh, actually, it's each um document that uh that was executed is represented on each one of these lines and so i've got a detailed uh history of my uh, notary activity and my journal and if i need to i could export this to excel or some other format i could pull this off the platform or i could leave it here trusting that uh, this provider um, as contracted with them is going to store my stuff for 10 years and so they can store on my behalf and I believe that is it. Andrew, did we want to show the the remnants of the signer experience or, or are we concluding at this point? We can for sure. If you want to stop sharing your screen, I have it open. Okay. So real quick, we'll show you what Andrew sees at the end. Great. So that five-star Uber rating style window uh, has expired. It, we just didn't fill it out promptly enough. But uh, it, again, it's an opportunity for me as the signer to uh, rate the experience on five stars, leave any um, uh, qualitative feedback that again, is something that might be helpful to you all as you think about uh, moving your customer experience online in the ways that um, your employees or the notaries that you work with um, offer this service. Um, but this is what I see as the signer at the end of the package. And so, as Eddie mentioned, all the documents find their way back to you as the lender or um, attorney in, in a given transaction. That's done automatically. The signer does have access to the documents for their historical reference. Uh, and you can see a copy of that here. Uh, it would not have this, uh, this watermark here about it being a test document, but as you can see, I can review it and see all of the signatures and, uh, that were placed and all of the information that is um, relevant to my given loan. Um, at any time, I, as the signer, can come back and access this transaction or any other notarizations that are completed on the platform. It's it's mapped to your account and the, the email that you use to, to sign up. Um, so again, if you hand off a, a physical uh, version of a an online notarization and for some reason needed a second copy of that, you'd be able to come back in and, and print it at any time. Um, we do give you the ability to download it all uh, in the moment, if you'd like to have that um, stored locally, or you can share it. This is more common in kind of the, the retail signing experience where folks are working with a, a company, get it notarized, and then need to make sure that it gets to the final destination appropriately. Again, because this is a loan package, we've taken care of that stuff on the back end. But again, ease of use for the signer to be able to access all of their historical documents, most of these being quite important. Um, at when whenever they need it. With that, I think we're. Well, no, go ahead, Eddie. 
Yeah, well, I, I just wanted to, to close this out, Andrew. Yeah. So um, excellent job. Thank you. And um, but we wanted to, to dig in. I took about 20 minutes or so to go through the demo. Um, that was with Andrew and I talking me way too much uh, to, to walk you through everything. But we did want to sort of demystify what the process looks like and the tools that are used and, and walk you through it from both points of view. So we hope that was effective. And um, we'll be happy to field questions as we close out. Uh, I think we'll leave about 10 minutes for questions. But I'm going to turn it back over to Dale, I believe, to um, tell us a little bit more about the New York law in particular. Yeah, so just quickly going through a couple of the specific points, the, the demo platform that you just saw is specifically formulated to act as if it were a New York notary's account. So that means we're hitting all of the marks where the law requires the platform to do or enable certain things. Um, for example, the um, AV record has to be held, the journal has to be held for 10 years. Those are both things the platform could do. I know that the, the journal issue in New York has been particularly um, of note for many people because it's a new requirement, especially for attorneys because it's gonna be required for all notaries. So this is something the platform can certainly help with. And I believe most platforms can do this as far as hosting the journal for you. As you saw at the end of the demo, the journal is populated automatically with the required information. Of course, there's places for you to add additional information as you would like to, but the points that are required by law are gonna be filled out automatically. That's something to really kind of help take the compliance burden off of you or your notaries to make sure that you're you're complying with the state law and allow you to use Ron without necessarily sweating some of the details. Um, you also saw some of the identity verification pieces, and I know there's a couple of questions about that in the Q&A that we'll get to in just a minute, um, specific to New York. But for now, we'll just move on and charge through this. Right, excellent. Um, we have a number of slides that outline the benefit, and they're they're pretty text rich here intentionally, so that um, uh, assuming uh, New York MBA provides uh, a copy of this deck or the recording, that you can go back and read through a lot of these details. But really, suffice it to say, what we see is the ben you know a number of different benefits on a traditional paper closing versus moving to online notarization or a RON closing. Um, so the, the traditional closing requires, obviously, a lot of logistics and drive time, and uh, you have issues like lost packages, you have uh, delayed uh, quality control later on um, due to reviewing paper uh, further in the process once it gets mailed back. But moving to online notarization, you've got uh, built-in fraud prevention and increased security measures. Um, the doc delivery is instant, so all the parties that uh, need access to the documents after they're executed can have them pretty much instantaneously. Uh, and just the fact of no more paper uh, lowers cost and streamlines process all around. It's different, but it does uh, it does provide a number of benefits. So you'll experience and what a number of uh, customers out there, not just ours, but any using online notarization for e-closing for digital mortgage or one-offs, higher revenue, lower cost, faster velocity overall, fewer signing errors and reduced fraud. So Dale, we can go to the next slide, please, if you were driving. Um, so just a number of those benefits that we see out there in working with um, attorneys, notaries, lenders, title agents. Um, one is that you can expand your business reach across the state. So whereas you might currently only be able to uh, do business where you can uh, bring someone into your office. Uh, online notarization removes geography from the equation. So it allows you to expand into other areas or more or less just offer the convenience of uh, no matter where your customer is, you can you can hop online with them and execute documents and notarize documents, you know, pretty much anywhere at any time. The appointment times are actually shorter as well. Um, you could hop back one slide, Dale, going faster than I can, than I am. Um, the, their shorter appointment time, so it, it did take about 20 minutes for Andrew and I to go through that demo, but uh, you know, without all the, the jibber jabbing and the talking, it does go fairly quickly. 
And uh, once you do get to sharing the documents, you can still spend as much time as you need to with your client to review the documents together, to point out certain things, um, just as if you're sitting in person. Uh, but in general, we see closings are much, much shorter, uh, the signing time, and obviously there's no drive time. So all of that time is fully eliminated. Um, convenience, uh, it, I, I think it's pretty obvious that you know, if you're not dealing with paper, you're not stuffing envelopes to send them out, which happens sometimes. You're certainly not opening envelopes of originals coming back over FedEx and mentioning FedEx. You're, there's no overnight delivery charges or delays. You don't have to make copies. There's no scanning, no shredding. Getting rid of paper, um, really, when you look across any business process, it is a game changer. Um, as I mentioned, no drive time for anyone. And uh, one of the things that kind of goes overlooked is that your, your customers, your signers, borrowers, or uh, real estate customers, they don't, have with, <clears throat> deal with, they don't have to deal with the logistics of taking time off of work necessarily to drive somewhere, uh, finding childcare if they're, if they're doing something after hours, or finding transportation if it's not something that's just readily available for them to move around. So uh, easing your clients of dealing with those logistics. Um, these types of signings can be done on your phone or on a laptop or a desktop. So uh, really, really adds a lot of benefit to, to your customers. And um, as we talked about the complexity of compliance, there are requirements on notaries and attorneys that are, uh, that are completing the notarial process. And the platforms really should, as part of your shopping list, the platforms should be able to meet those requirements and store the documents, make sure they're uh, tamper evident, uh, secured and encrypted along the way, store the recording of the session on your behalf and host your journal as well. And so there's just a number of things that, the, that a platform vendor can do for you that means you don't have to find other solutions yourself. So now we can move Dale, we'll hop to the next one. And so um, also, uh, just across the industry, not just um, uh, for New York notaries and attorneys, but really across the industry, we're seeing a lot of different um, uh, different types of companies in the real estate space that are adopting online notarization. And just one thing in particular I wanted to point out under settlement providers is this myth that settlement agents or closers or closing companies or escrow companies, uh, attorneys, that they can't adopt RON until the lenders really drive the change. But that's not the case. Um, there are certainly, if, if um, the closing is a loan closing on loan documents, yes, the lender would have to drive that and initiate uh, the intent to move forward with online notarization. But in the case of cash buyer closings or the seller side of the closing, these can be driven by the settlement providers or the attorneys doing those closings, as well as curative documents. So there's um, a lot of uh, adoption that has been and is taking place with thousands uh, of settlement providers across the U.S. And we're really seeing that the, you know, even in the non-loan document space, that there's a, a lot of movement toward RON. Um, so with you know, lenders are moving quickly as well. It just takes a little bit more to line up their e-note solution and then their online notarization solution with their POS solution. But that is moving forward as well um, on the lender side with lender initiated transactions. Um, in the interest of time, I think we'll just move forward to, I wanna make sure we have enough time for the questions. But uh, Dale, if you could go to the next slide um, we prepared a checklist here of, and this is not comprehensive, but just some things you want to think about when looking at, uh, if you are looking at RON providers and vendors, um, key points are bank grade security and compliance um, with the right credentials, reports, and uh, certifications. And then there's a number of features that I pointed out at the bottom on supporting multiple signers. Can you schedule ahead uh, day and time? Um, does it have the option to sign some documents ahead of the signing, uh, the, the notary appointment itself? There are a number of different features you might wanna look at as well. So there's your, your uh, punch list if you wanted to uh, have a takeaway. And then lastly, 
Um, just getting started, uh, if this is something that you um, or your company you want to move forward with, this is just the advice uh, I give all of our customers. And uh, even before working here at Proof, I was giving uh, folks in the industry is start with mentally preparing and knowing that this is going to be a different process and understand why you're doing it. Cost savings, convenience, security, uh, all are great reasons. So, you know, pick uh, one, some, or all of those reasons, but just know your why and what's driving you forward. Chart a course and come up with a plan to get to your first closing and a first transaction. That's a lot easier to chew off than trying to get to 100% of your loans, for example. Um, assign somebody in your organization who is the smartest person in the room on online notarization. So develop your expert, do some shopping, uh, interview a lot of vendors. And then when you get down to a small number of vendors, put their expertise to work for you. Um, we've been doing this a long time and uh, a lot of our competitors as well. Try some experiments, test in a safe place, and then complete your first run, then another, and then another. Once you get to about five, you'll have it figured out and you'll be on your way. And I think with that, we have time for questions. Yes, and there are a few, and I think there's some we can probably knock out pretty quickly. Um, and okay. I can just help usher a few of those and then I'll let uh, Eddie, you can run through some of the, the longer ones, I think. So Dale, um, can you talk a little bit about signer location and whether or not they need to be located in the state of New York? Yep. So signers can be located anywhere. It's not something we automatically capture. I will say there are some caveats around if they're internationally located. The Department of State has some FAQs that would be helpful for you to look at as far as what the notary has to do if the signer is located internationally. Just something to keep in mind if you know that your customer is going to be located out of the country. Outside of that, the only person that has to be located within the state of New York is the notary. Signer can be located anywhere across the United States, and there's um, no restrictions on that. You know, um, for New York counties in recording, can you talk a little bit about e-recording versus not, and whether or not you know this would need to be an e-recording process for closings, and where that can be yep. accepted? So e-recording is pretty widely available across New York, fortunately. Um, I know that the clerks were involved in this process and supportive of Ron generally. As far as the list of e-recording counties go, the Property Records Industry Association, or PREA, which many of you may or may not be familiar with, uh, is who maintains that list. And I believe you can get that information from that organization. Earlier, we had a, a note on papering out, which is where you can take this remotely notarized electronic document and then turn it into a tangible document that can be recorded as an original. Fortunately, New York, in its wisdom, did include that in their law. And so that enables you to be able to use remote online notarization and still properly record the documents, even if the county is not set up for e-recording. New York, like many states, has counties of kind of varying levels of technological advancement. So even if you have a property that needs to be recorded and one that doesn't support it, you can still participate with Ron. Last one of the rapid fire series, Dale. Uh, if you have an internal employee that you know well for witnessing, um, can you speak a little bit about any of those requirements or possible workarounds? Yeah, so um, the law does allow you to be signers for Ron to be identified in one of three ways. Personal knowledge, as this question is asking about the use of a credible witness or a multi-step um, authentication process, which is what we showed you. We demonstrated that because uh, multiple forms of identity proofing are what's most typically used on the platform, but the platform does support personal knowledge and the law allows it as well. All right. That's the end of our rapid fire series. Thank you, Dale, for joining the hot seat. Uh, Eddie, do you want to take some of these other ones that I think are better suited for you? Uh, I'd rather Dale answer them all because he's doing such a great job, but um yeah, I'll jump in. So um, first question, and, and I'll ask my panelists to help me out and my coworkers to help me out on these if I if I miss any details. Um, so the first question I see here is, um, what if the ID or the selfie identification fails? Well, remember that online notarization, the intent is not to pass everybody and get everybody through to sign. It's to make sure that they are them first and then proceed with the electronic signatures and e-notarization process. So 
typically what you would want if the ID or selfie identification fails is that that person would not be able then to proceed with an online notarization. So keep that in mind with your process or as you're thinking about rolling this out at your company is that you would want to have, and, and this does happen from time to time, you would want to have a backup procedure to um, to allow, a, uh, whether it's a mobile notary or uh, give them time to uh, get to an office to execute documents just in case that the the you know the the ID fails. Um, so anyway, that that's how I would answer that question. Uh, I would just I would just add Eddie that a lot of times we see issues from people just maybe not necessarily taking the best picture, and the notary can prompt a retake in session. So it may not necessarily be that they are not who they say they are. It could just be a, a user error, really. So probably best practice to, to try a retake once or twice, see if that gets you past the issues, and then move on to contingency plans like Eddie's speaking about. Yeah, excellent point. Sometimes there's a glare on the ID. And so when, once you connect with the notary, they can uh, sort of coach a signer through that process to take the best possible picture. And a lot of times that does cure the issue of the technology just not, just not being able to see the ID clearly. Um, let's see. Uh, it looks like you can use notaries outside of the proof network. How do they get the training for this process? Say it's an attorney. And where's the transaction recording stored? Um, so the uh, our platform does allow um, whether it's your company's employees or an external notary, we do allow that uh, for transactions. <clears throat> and we do in our support section on our website, we have uh, robust uh, training materials, including uh, recorded videos, demos, and things like that. So there's plenty of training available and the video is stored for the company or the entity that creates a transaction as well as the notary themselves. They both have access to that recording. And our last question, is there a time of operations for the notary network? Uh, can there be a closing notary at 10 p.m., for example? So um, for not, not all providers have a have their own panel available. Say, you know, we, we look at it as like panel of Uber drivers, but they're notaries for us. Um, our network is available 24 seven. Um, and, you know, you really have to check with other providers on uh, the availability of their networks. But yeah, we do, we do signings 24 seven and we do have notaries online 24 uh, seven for those on demand signings that are needed. Boom, Elizabeth, there's, 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, there's a couple ahead, more. Sorry, there's a couple more questions just in the regular chat that I think we can answer fairly quickly. I think we covered the oh, e-recording yeah, process. Andrew, maybe you can talk about the question around the consent form and when that's typically signed. Yeah, reading it real quick. Is the consent form signed earlier in the process? How does this get sent? Is it needed for all parties, not just the consumers? So uh, the platform, our platform specifically, does allow um, the ability to either use our e-sign consent form or to upload your own. Generally, it is completed um, at the beginning of the actual signing process. It is not something that takes place um, separate from the closing because it's... Um, it is applied to that specific closing, which is why it's automatically uploaded and applied as that uh, the first document in the given transaction. And then the easy answer is yes, the, the platform does allow for the use of initials as well. Um, sorry to extend things, but just wanted to make sure we got all the questions in. Yep. Great, thank you. I think you all set with the Q and A. I think we're good. Okay, good. great. Now, thank you very much, Dale, Andrew, Eddie, and James. Very informative and definitely demystified the whole Ron process for sure.